Today we are going to study market demand and elasticity. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to derive the market demand curve from a set of individual demand curves. For a given consumer or set of consumers, you should be able to calculate the price elasticity of demand, the cross price elasticity of demand, and the income elasticity of demand and explain what the numerical values of each of these elasticities mean. Finally, you should be able to explain the relationship between the price elasticity of demand and a firm's total and marginal revenues. You have learned that a consumer's demand for a good is the result of solving the consumer's utility maximization problem. Normally, we represent an individual's quantity demanded with the lowercase letter x. The subscript denotes the good. Typically, demand for the good is a function of the price of the good, the prices of other goods, and income, which is denoted with the letter M. To find the market demand for good one, simply add up all of the individual consumer demands for that good. When we conduct graphical analyses of market outcomes, we usually use the inverse demand function. The inverse demand function represents price as a function of quantity. One way to think about the inverse demand function is that it represents a consumer's maximum willingness to pay or reservation price for a given quantity of a good. To find the market inverse demand function, simply horizontally sum all of the individual inverse demand functions. For example, Suppose that there are three consumers in a market. Consumer 1 has an inverse demand function equal to P equals 20 minus Q. Consumer 2 has an inverse demand function of P equals 10 minus Q. And consumer 3 has an inverse demand function of P equals 5 minus Q. Suppose that the price is 5. At a price of 5, Consumer 1's demand is 15, Consumer 2's demand is 5, and Consumer 3's demand is 0. Therefore, the total market demand at a price of 5 is 20 units. You would find other points on the market demand curve by substituting different prices into the inverse demand equation and solving for the quantities for each consumer and adding them up. Now that we've found the market demand for a good, we can start to describe characteristics of the market demand. One characteristic is how responsive consumers are to changes in a good's price. We call this responsiveness elasticity. In general, the elasticity of y with respect to x measures how responsive a variable y is to a change in another variable x. Elasticity is a unitless way to measure how one variable responds to changes in another variable. In principle, we can measure the elasticity of anything with respect to anything, but for demand, there are three common elasticities that we calculate. First, if y is quantity demanded of a good and x is the price of that same good, we have the price elasticity of demand. Second, if y is the quantity demanded of a good and x is income, we have the income elasticity of demand. Third, if y is quantity demanded of a good and x is the price of a different good, such as a substitute or a complement, we have the cross price elasticity of demand. The next few slides provide the formulas for each elasticity as well as examples of how to calculate them. In general, the formula for the elasticity of y with respect to x is simply the percentage change in y divided by the percentage change in x. To calculate the percent change in a variable, divide the change in a variable by its original value. If we plug the formula for the percent changes in y and x into the elasticity equation and rearrange, we find that the elasticity is just the change in y divided by the change in x times the ratio of the original values of x and y. This interpretation of the formula turns out to be very useful. We will start off with the price elasticity of demand. 
Before we get into the details, note that you will often hear economists talking about the, quote, elasticity of demand. That term always refers to the price elasticity of demand. If we are talking about some other kind of elasticity, we will always put another word in front of the word elasticity so that you will know which elasticity we are talking about. The price elasticity of demand measures how responsive quantity demanded is to changes in price. The formula for the price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. Note that the price elasticity of demand will always be negative. You should think about why this is the case. Because we should always get a negative value for the price elasticity of demand, we usually use the absolute value of the number when thinking about what it means. However, if you are calculating elasticities with real data, as you will in your econometrics class, the negative sign is important. And if you find a positive price elasticity of demand in real world data, you may have something very strange going on in your data. Let's work through a couple of examples of calculating the price elasticity of demand. In this first example, you simply have the old and new prices and quantities of the good, which for the sake of this example, we will keep generic. To calculate the price elasticity of demand, we simply substitute these numbers into our percentage change formulas. When we do this, we see that the price fell by 20%, and the quantity demanded rose by 33%. Therefore, the price elasticity of demand is 33% divided by 20%, or 1.65. In words, this number means that if the price rises by 1%, quantity demanded will fall by 1.65%. Note that because we will always get a negative number when we calculate the price elasticity of demand, we usually drop the negative when referring to this elasticity. A second way to compute the price elasticity of demand is to use the formula for the demand curve. As you can see from the formula for this elasticity, the change in quantity divided by the change in price is simply the slope of the demand curve. Therefore, if you know the slope of the demand curve and the coordinates of a point on the demand curve, you can find the elasticity at this point. Suppose that we have a demand curve whose formula is quantity equals 100 minus 5 times the price. One point on this demand curve is price equals 5 and quantity equals 75. The price elasticity of demand will equal the slope of the demand curve times 5 divided by 75 or negative 0.33. In words, this number means that for every 1% increase in the price, quantity demanded falls by 0.33%. We can also use calculus to calculate the price elasticity of demand. Note that the slope of the demand curve is simply the derivative of quantity with respect to price. So, we can, change, we can replace the change in Q divided by the change in P in the elasticity formula with the derivative of Q with respect to P. This formula will work for both linear and nonlinear demand curves. The nature of demand depends on how sensitive quantity is to changes in price. We use the terms elastic and inelastic to describe this sensitivity. First, some notation. We use the Greek letter epsilon, which is Greek for E, to represent the price elasticity of demand. Remember that the price elasticity of demand is always negative, so in the discussion that follows, we will refer to the absolute value of epsilon. If the absolute value of epsilon is less than 1, then demand is inelastic. This means that consumers don't tend to adjust their quantity purchased very much in response to price changes. Typically, Goods that do not have many good substitutes tend to be inelastically demanded. If epsilon is greater than 1, then demand is elastic. If a good is elastically demanded, then consumers are very responsive to changes in prices. Generally, goods that have many substitutes have more elastic demands. In addition, 
Goods on which we spend a larger portion of our income also tend to have more elastic demands, since we have a larger incentive to adjust our purchases in response to price changes. Finally, demand for goods tends to be more elastic in the long run than in the short run, since consumers have more time to adjust their purchases over the long run. If the price elasticity of demand equals 1, then we say that demand is unit elastic. Demands that are unit elastic are neither elastic nor inelastic. In the extreme, if the price elasticity of demand is 0, then demand is perfectly inelastic. This means that consumers won't change the amount that they buy, no matter what the price is. The other extreme is perfectly elastic demand which corresponds to an infinite value for the price elasticity of demand. In this case, consumers are very responsive to price changes and drop their quantity purchased instantaneously to zero if the price rises at all. The price elasticity of demand will change along a linear demand curve. This is because, although the slope of the line is constant, the ratio of price to quantity changes as you move down the curve. At the top of the curve, the price is high and the quantity is small, so the ratio of price to quantity is large. Thus, at this point on the curve, the elasticity is greater than 1 in absolute value and demand is elastic. At the bottom of the curve, price is small and quantity is large, so the ratio of price to quantity is small and the absolute value of the elasticity is less than 1, making demand inelastic along this portion of the curve. The absolute value of the elasticity will be exactly 1 at the midpoint of the curve. Although the price elasticity of demand will change along any downward sloping linear demand curve, we can make some general statements about the relationship between the slope of a linear demand curve and the price elasticity of demand. In general, the steeper a demand curve, the more inelastic demand is. The flatter the demand curve, the more elastic it is. In the extreme, a vertical demand curve is perfectly inelastic, which means that no matter what the price, quantity demanded doesn't change. You can remember this by remembering that the vertical demand curve forms the I in the word inelastic. A horizontal demand curve is perfectly elastic, which means that at the price that corresponds to the vertical intercept, a producer can sell as much as they want. If they raise the price, they'll go from being able to sell as much as they want to selling nothing instantaneously. You can remember that horizontal demand curves are perfectly elastic, by remembering that the horizontal demand curve forms part of the E in the word elastic. Often, a straight line is not the best representation of real-world demand. Sometimes, a curve better captures the real-world relationship between price and quantity. In a curve like the one pictured in this figure, the elasticity of demand is constant across the entire curve. Typically, the formula for a curve like this would be the natural log of quantity equals a constant plus epsilon times the natural log of price. In this equation, the coefficient of the natural log of price is the price elasticity of demand. You may find that you apply this information in your econometrics course sometime in the near future. Companies are often interested in the value of the price elasticity of demand for their products. The reason why is that how sensitive consumers are to price changes provides firms with information that is useful for determining whether or not increasing their price will increase or decrease their revenues. Remember that a firm's total revenues equals their price per unit multiplied by the number of units that it sells, or price times quantity. If demand for a good is elastic, then consumers are very sensitive to price changes, and the percentage change in quantity is greater than the percentage change in price. This means that if a firm increases its price, then their quantity sold will fall by more than the increase in price, and their revenue will fall. Conversely, if demand is inelastic, then the percent change in quantity demanded is greater 
is sorry is less than the than the increase in price. If a firm raises its price, the price increase will be larger than the decrease in quantity and the overall effect on a firm's revenues will be positive. Although it may seem silly, the arrow method that I have demonstrated in these two slides can be a foolproof way to remember the relationship between elasticity and total revenue. Whichever variable changes by more will tell you whether the price increase or quantity decrease dominates and whether total revenue will rise or fall. This table summarizes the effect of a price increase or decrease on a firm's revenue for elastic and inelastic demands. Remember that if you have trouble remembering the information in this table, you can always use the arrow method demonstrated in the previous slides to determine the effect of a price change on a firm's revenues. There are two other elasticities that we commonly compute in economics. The first is the income elasticity of demand, which measures how responsive demand is to changes in income. The income elasticity of demand will be positive for normal goods and negative for inferior goods. The second is the cross price elasticity of demand, which measures how quantity demanded of one good changes when the price of a different good changes. We use the same general elasticity formula to calculate the cross price elasticity of demand, except that we use the subscripts X and Y on the quantity and price to indicate that we are measuring quantity changes in one good and price changes for a different good. If goods X and Y are substitutes, then the consumer will buy more of good X when the price of good Y increases and the cross price elasticity of demand will be positive. If goods X and Y are complements, then the consumer will buy less of good X when the price of good Y increases and the cross price elasticity of demand will be negative. This concludes this overview of measuring elasticities of demand. You will have practiced calculating and interpreting all of these numbers in class.